Hi, I'm Scott Munster from Driver61 and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a Formula 1 gearbox and how the barrel and selector forks actually work on the internal part of the gearbox. Last week I was at Mansell Motorsport and I showed you the inside of a 1997 Formula 1 Jordan gearbox. Well, I'm back here again this week to show you the internals and how to build a Formula 1 gearbox and how all the, the gears, the selector forks and the barrel go together inside the gearbox. From last week's video, I had lots of questions about how the selector forks works, what the barrel actually looked like in the gearbox. So I've got all the pieces laid out here and we're going to take a look at them now to show you exactly what's inside. If you've not watched the video from last week, I suggest watching it so you can see where the gearbox is in relation to all the other components of a Formula 1 car and actually what the gearbox casing and the cluster of gears looks like. So here we have all the parts laid out on the desk here. And as I mentioned, if you haven't seen the video from last week, please go ahead and watch it so that you can see where all of these parts are when they're together. But first up, we have the, the lay shaft just here. Um, this is the shaft that's driven directly from the engine. And then it has the lay gears on just here. So these slide on, and you'll see in a second that I'm gonna slide them on the lay shaft. Then on top of that, in the gearbox, we have the main shaft. Now this is a shaft that is driven by the delay shaft. It has the main shaft gears on, as you can see just here. And they again slide onto the, the main shaft that you can see just here. Now next up, which is the, the part that everybody was asking about, were the selector forks, which go actually onto these hubs. They go onto the hubs like this, so they can move the dog ring across and select the gear. Well, these selector forks are connected to the barrel here. So the selector forks go onto the selector shaft that you can just see here, and they slide on the selector shaft as you'll see in just a moment. And then the barrel has these grooves in them as you're gonna see in a second, and that moves the selector forks as the barrel rotates around. Finally, we have the front cover where the shafts fit into these bearings, the lay shaft and the main shaft up here. Finally, with the, um, the barrel fitting in just here and the selector shaft just fitting in in this uh, bearing just here. So first up, we're going to take the lay shaft and put the lay gears on there before we then attach that to the front plate. Now, this is slightly different to how you would actually build the gearbox if it was going directly in the, the gearbox casing. Uh, but for the purposes of showing you today, um, I'm going to build it in that, in that slightly different, different way so you can see it a bit easier. So we've got the lay shaft here, the one that's driven by the engine. You can see we've got first gear here and it's actually machined on the shaft. It isn't a separate gear. The reason for that is that actually the, the diameter of the gear would be, would be too small and the wall thickness here would actually be too thin if it was a separate gear itself. So we have first gear here, then we put, this, put the spacer on. Spacer slides down, and this is the gap actually for the for the main gears over here, for the main shaft gears over here. It's the gap where the dog ring would sit and move from side to side to select first and then into second gear across here. So we're going to add second gear on the shaft. And obviously these gears um, come off the shafts so, so that you can change the gear ratios. So you might run longer gears at a circuit where you need a higher top speed and shorter gears where you prefer to have the acceleration rather than the ultimate top speed. So we've got second gear on and now we put in third gear as you can see here. Slide it on the shaft. Next up we put the spacer on. Then we have fourth gear. Then we have fourth gear, followed by fifth gear, as we've slid on there. Then we have the spacer for the dogs, or for the dog. Then we have sixth gear going on finally. And then we have another spacer, so the shaft fits in the bearing properly and you can see that it's all such a perfect fit. So here we have it, first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear 
and sixth gear. And again, these spaces are so that the dog ring can sit in the middle on that main shaft on top in the gearbox casing, move across and engage whichever gear the driver wants to take. So there we have the lay shaft all made up. Okay, now moving on to the, the main shaft where all the gear changing uh, effectively takes place. So we've got the main shaft and again it's splined uh, just like the lay shaft was as you can see around here. And this is the bevel gear at the end of the main shaft. So let's put the gears on this main shaft. Here we have first and re well reverse and first. Then we have like on the Jordan gearbox, if you saw that, we have the hub and we have the dog ring and then the second gear. We slide that onto the main shaft. Then we have the hub for third and fourth. So again, you can see this is how the dog ring shifts from one gear to the other. And we'll, we'll show you the selector fork that actually sits on top here a little bit later and moves uh, the dog ring across to actually engage those gears. So third and fourth. And finally, we have fifth and sixth sit on just here. So there we have the main shaft with all of the gears on. First gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, and sixth gear, finally. And again, you can see the dog rings here, how they move across. And uh, you can see what happens when they actually go dog to dog and they fall in once the dogs moved out of the way. So next up we're going to put these shafts into the front cover so I can show you how they integrate and then how the selector forks and the barrel work together to actually change the gears. Okay, so there we have it. That's the main and the lay shaft in the front housing, the, the, the front plate. Um, obviously, that isn't how you would normally uh, put the gears in. You'd actually do it the other way around. With these ends of the shafts actually supported by the, the main gearbox casing. But obviously, I can't do that because I want to show you how the gears go together with, for the best possible display. So next I'm going to put in the barrel and the selector shaft with the selectors on it so I can show you how the barrel rotates and how it actually moves the selector forks to engage the gears. Next we're going to put the selector forks in place uh, before we then put the selector shaft in and then finally the barrel. So the cool thing about these selector forks, they have this little nodule on them here that will actually fit inside the barrel here and you can just see through there. The selector fork sits in, in the track here so we have first and second here, second, uh, third and fourth and fifth and sixth here for example. So we take here from neutral into first, first into second, then it goes back into, into neutral in between the gears and then the third and fourth selector fork takes over into third, into fourth, here, then back into neutral in between the gears. And you can see that first and second is in between gears as well. Then we go over to the third selector fork and we go into fifth, across into fifth, and then finally into sixth. And we're back round 
So we come all the way back round into first and second, as you can see there, which is a really, really lovely piece of engineering. And this is actually very similar to the barrel that's on the Jordan gearbox, if you saw the other video that I made about Formula One gearboxes. So I've just had to move the selector shaft just out of the way so I can actually get the the barrel in position and then put the uh, selector fork so the nodules can go in these uh, little areas on the on the barrel itself. So you can see that the selector forks just went into the barrel there and now I can push down on the selector shaft and it's all engaged in. So there we have it, we had the lay shaft with the lay gears from first all the way down to sixth. We have the main shaft with reverse um, first down to sixth again. We have the selector forks in here. Then we have the selector shaft just at the back here. Selector shaft with the selector forks connected and the barrel finally here that the change will come through to then rotate around, move the selector forks and engage whichever gear the driver requires. So as you can see here, the, let me just get down it a little bit. The barrel is actually in first gear. So you can see that this selector fork is up against uh, the the big gear here which is which is and the big gear and, and the smallest gear here which is actually first so then when the barrel rotates this fork will move down and select second gear when it rotates again selector fork will move up select third rotate again move down to select fourth and, a, and so on and so on through fifth and sixth gears and then all the way back down. So it's not possible like an H-pattern gearbox to go from fourth to second for example. You have to go through all of the gears in this sequential gearbox. So now I've got everything set up here for you just to go over things. The barrel, the selector shaft, the selector forks here, the main shaft with the gears and the lay shaft just here. So we're going to try and show you how the barrel rotates when a driver requests a gear shift. So we're in first gear and we rotate the barrel and it goes into second gear. Put the ratchet back and we just look at the next selector fork along this one here. We go up the gear and you can see that the second gear selector fork is actually coming back into the neutral position. And the third gear then went into third gear. So the third gear selector fork moved across and went into third gear. It was a little bit difficult because it went dog to dog. The two dogs um, on the dog ring and the dogs that are on the gear went together. And when that happens, it can't quite go into gear properly. So now if you watch the selector fork, the third and fourth gear selector fork, we go from third up top here and then down into fourth gear, just down here. Then the next gear, we go from fourth. This should then go to neutral and we should take fifth gear just here. Into neutral and then the selector fork down here takes fifth gear. And that works the same all the way down the gears or all the way up the gears rather from first down to sixth and then all the way back down from sixth to first gear.
if we take a closer look at the barrel here, you can see how the channel uh, for third and fourth gear that we're looking at here in the middle um, actually rotates and how it shifts that selector fork uh, to then move across onto the dogs of the two different gears. So you can see here that we're moving the barrel around and it moves the selector fork. So a really simple way, but a very intelligent way for the selector forks to actually work like that. And it's an absolutely beautiful piece of engineering. Okay, so that's all for this Driver 61 video. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe to the Driver 61 channel. And if you'd like me to look inside any of the Formula One parts, please let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.